Hello everyone and welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy's instrument rating course. Have you ever thought about the situation where you might use an instrument approach procedure to get into an airport or it's an environment, but you want to land on a different runway at that airport? <clears throat> Can I do this? Is there such a thing? Is this possible? Yes. Folks, this is called a circling approach. Welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy and our instrument rating course. Yours truly, Mike Thompson, reminding you that there are three key things to make you successful in this course. Number one, please, you must be online in Epic's instrument rating course and studying the material associated with this content. Number two, thanks for watching these videos. We're so glad you're here. Please click subscribe. And of course, you are going to review in detail all of this with your flight instructor in the FTD, in the aircraft, one-on-one, -on, -one, on the ground, et cetera, to help you become that competent instrument rated pilot that we know you are all going to be. Now, what about this circling approach? You may come into this airport using an instrument approach procedure, but want to land on another runway. A circling approach allows you to shoot an instrument approach procedure to one runway and circle to another. Now, airport restrictions, runway length, and weather conditions are some of the reasons why a pilot might choose to circle. A circling approach requires the pilot maintain a specific radius from each runway approach end, dependent upon the category that the aircraft operates the approach within. Now, we won't talk about categories in detail. We've covered that in another video, and you can review that with your flight instructor. But you remember that categories A through E are based on the aircraft's speed, and I want you to review that with your flight instructor. Now, when circling, the pilot must have the runway of intended landing in sight at all times. Or if we were to lose sight of the runway of intended landing, what do we do? We execute the missed approach procedure. Now you can see on our graphic here, categories A through E, and that circling radius from and you can see on the picture, the approach end of that runway. Now, specific method of how to conduct a circle to the intended runway is really left up to you, the pilot. However, and your flight instructor will talk to you about this, it is preferred and if you think about it, it makes perfect sense to keep that circling maneuver as close to a standard traffic pattern as possible. Now, if you take a look at our graphic, in the left-hand column, you can see some examples of this aircraft that came into the airport using an IAP instrument approach procedure and is approaching the end of the aircraft or the, I'm sorry, end of the runway, either straight on or, or slightly offset. For example, in the left-hand column, at the top, you can see I'm coming straight into my runway of intended landing, but in the opposite direction. And what does the pilot do? makes a, a, a very simple sidestep to the pilot's right. So now the runway is on their left and they are on a left downwind. Again, as close to a standard traffic pattern as, as we possibly can. In the next runway down, 
you see I'm kind of approaching the approach end of my uh, landing runway at about a 45, and I'm kind of going to dog leg to the right, so I'm on a left base to final. Or in the next picture down, same example. But I didn't make good visual contact with that runway till I was a little bit closer. So to avoid drastic maneuvering to the right to enter my left downwind and final, notice in this picture, I'm going to fly right over the runway and make a right turn, come in on a right base in a normal controlled landing, or in the bottom picture on the left-hand column, I have a good clear picture of the runway, I'm going to fly right down the center line, make a left-hand turn to a left downwind, or now take a look in the right-hand column. What if I'm not coming toward the approach end of the runway, you know, either straight on or, or at a slight angle? What if I'm coming at this runway at a right angle? And you can see in the bottom pictures in the right-hand column, well, at this right angle, I can come straight to the approach end of the runway, make a right turn into a base and final, or I can cross over the center of that runway, right turn, or in the bottom right, if I see that runway soon enough, I can actually make a right turn, and again, to a left downwind, a left base, and a normal landing, as close to the standard traffic pattern as possible. So you can see there is no specific maneuver, but just trying to get it to a standard traffic pattern. At uncontrolled airports, it is up to you as the pilot to let other pilots know what you're doing and how you plan to maneuver and which runway you plan to maneuver to. At controlled airports, advise ATC how you plan to maneuver, or they may advise you on how they would request that you maneuver. Now, these circling minimums can be found um, on your approach chart. And I want you to notice here at the top, standard circling minimums for categories A, B, C, D, and E. For example, let's look at category B. The standard circling minimum is 1.5. Now, this is nautical miles from the approach end of the runway. So when we say circling minimums, we're talking about, in this case, the distance, the lateral distance in nautical miles from the approach end of the runway. However, due to concerns with increase in true airspeed at higher altitudes, the FAA has published expanded circling minimums. Now, pilots in faster aircraft at higher altitudes were requiring steeper banking maneuvers during the circling uh, uh, procedure. And so this has resulted in these um, expanded circling approach maneuvering minimums. So at the bottom of this chart, you can see those expanded minimum. So again, let's stay in category B. Now, as I come down the column in category B, on the left-hand side, I see circling MDA in feet MSL. And notice, for example, let's say, oh, my airport um, had an elevation of 2,700 feet. Well, if I look in the left-hand column, I see from 1,001 to 3,000 feet, my new circling minimum in category B would be 1.8 miles, as opposed to the original 1.5.
So here's a question. How do I know if this uh, airport has non-standard or expanded circling minimum? Now, the answer to that is simple. Take a look at this graphic, and this is from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. And in the left-hand column, you see where it says circling. These are the circling minima for this approach. And we've highlighted in yellow what we call the negative C. Now, by that we mean it's a black box with the letter C shown in negative or in white. And this comes from the idea of old photo negatives. And that's where that term negative C comes from. But really, it's a black box with the white C inside of it. This tells me that I am going to use the non-standard or alternative circling minimums. So, on this approach, at 700 feet MDA and one and one quarter miles visibility in category B, and New Smyrna Beach is at sea level, so if I come back to this chart, I see, oh, 1,000 feet or less, that would be sea level, category B, my circling minimum is one point. Seven. So folks, that just about wraps up our information on circling. Join us next time. <laughs>